The fighting art of Escrima is fast becoming the national sport of the Philippines. Its acknowledged champion is Kakoi Kenyeti. He lives on the island of Cebu, one of the large islands that make up the Philippines. His home has always been in Cebu City, the capital of the island, a place of harsh contrasts. Just outside the city centre is the headquarters of the small club which sets the standard for a screamer throughout the nation. The name of the club, Dossé Paris, means 12 pairs and is taken from the name of Charlemagne's bodyguard. The club celebrated its 50th anniversary in 1982. It was started by the family Cagnetti to train themselves and their friends. It is still a family club. The training ground is beside Kakoi's house, which he shares with his children and their families. Eskrima is a fighting system in a state of transition. It has been used for hundreds of years throughout the Philippines. Now, people like the Kanyetis are adding to the basic art, the sophistication of Japanese techniques. An indication of this is the practice of forms, or katas. They are long, elaborate solo performances. This one is a speciality of Dione Kanyeti. He spends most of his time in Manila, working as a very successful businessman. Though they are adding Japanese ideas to the techniques, 50 years is not long enough to also import Japanese formality. Any activity on the training ground is watched by every curious eye in the neighborhood. Okay. Most of the Cebuanos speak two languages. Training is conducted in both English and in the language of Cebu. Screamer is a complex, sophisticated, and effective fighting system. Much of the credit for its present status is due to the Dossi Paris Club, with Kako Kenyeti as its leading fighter, publicist, and master. The most common and the most effective type of holding is the full grip type. This in this manner, even if it is hit, hit on the side, either from any direction still, you can control the stick. And the, there's an allowance of about two inches from the butt. Purpose is to use this for disarming, for, for hitting any part of the body at close range. Then you can twirl the stick, see, in any direction, see. And there are people, there are screamers who twirl the stick in this manner. They always open the palm. I observed many there in the United States, uh, screamers opening the palm whenever they twirl. But those Paris people are always full grip. The stick, see? See? Many weapons are used in a screamer, but Kakoi has always concentrated on the stick, made from a special tough light wood, hardened by always fire. Full grip, see? Full grip, see? He has brought new strikes into the system developing curving strikes rather than straight or linear ones. And the most uh, effective strike is the curved strike. You can easily block the linear strike. But when the strike is curving, no matter how hard you try to block the strike, the, the forehand of the stick will always reach the target. So look. Even gentle sparring is a painful process for Kakoi's opponent. He is an advanced student, but he never manages to hit Kakoi once.
Kakoyas had many real fights. All his life he has been challenged, always having to use his techniques against new opponents. He has never lost in over a hundred fights. After a few moments, the challengers always collapse before him. The only way to prove that your style is the best is to accept any challenge. How can you how can you claim that your style is the best when you do not accept any challenge? That's why in our group, whenever there is a student who refuses to fight, I always uh, ask him to retire. So what you, what will be what what use will will our techniques be if he has all the techniques and he doesn't use it in actual fight? The screamer is above all a practical fighting art. It has developed out of the need to survive in a violent society where knives are a common weapon. Okay. Mm -hmm. These defensive moves are designed to push the knives away so that they don't slice into the vital veins and arteries on the inside of the arms. Then both opponents are disarmed, again avoiding the knife blades. Because you can't take a room. Huh? You actually get the farther, the farther the... Yeah, ah, okay. Elogio Cagnetti is the oldest of the founding brothers. He has always been the president of the Dossi Paris. Although over 80, he is still a formidable fighter. You know, yeah. Just like in, uh, just like it is like this. Oh, Laura. Please. Without this thing, it's actually the same. Now, if you have this, it's the same technique. Black, then. Huh? One of the masters at Dossi Paris is alive because he was taught how to defend himself against knife attack. It happened when he was walking with a friend. Neither of them had weapons. The friend ran away when they were attacked by seven men with knives. Master Karin nearly died in the attack, but fought back, killing one of them. It is lucky that he survived that fight. Of course, one of the brothers got killed. They... The... Look. Yeah. This one hit my liver and my stomach. <laughs> See? <laughs> there. <laughs> this is an operation. <laughs> too much, but That's the evidence that he, he gets in a rare I was, fight. I was sitting there, though. That's why I'm down. And they make a stabbing uh, position while I'm down. And I snatch all the daggers. And that dagger which I snatch hit one of the my hit one of my opponent. So I snatch it. <laughs> if his opponent what brother? was the only one. He could easily beat his opponent, but then there were, yeah, there were four, three, brother four brothers and three, three companions. And so it's a stone. stone. Yeah, you are lucky. You should be thankful to God, thankful to God for having God. learned. Thankful to our organization, especially of, the Dosi uh, Paris. For it had to be because of my skill and earnest and combat judo. Well, I'm already under the, below the ground. The only yardstick for his skill is to have an actual yeah, fight. Try. Yeah. Inspiring. It's not enough that, that you deliver the strike. But if you deliver multiple strikes, for example, I deliver here. You see? See? Wrap it. Then here. See? See? All in our movements. So you put your opponent on the defensive position. But if you deliver only one strike, that he will fight back. Surely he will fight back. But you deliver a series of strikes, he will be on the run. He will be always on the defensive. Do you understand? Yes, sir. The function of the stick in a screamer is obvious, but the left hand is just as important. Kakoi's left hand moves independently of his right. All the time it controls his opponent's stick, never allowing it to strike him.
Akoi's opponent is one of his sons, Edgar. Though he was trained by his father, he is not yet in the same class. He just cannot penetrate his father's defences. Kakoi's strikes curl around Edgar's body. He can achieve six strikes a second. Apart from the pain, the speed of such an attack is absolutely demoralizing. Dossier Paris shows its techniques to the public in January. Each year there is a procession through Cebu City and the club prepares a special demonstration to perform as they march along. The procession celebrates the arrival of the Spanish explorer Magellan in Cebu and his death at the hands of a local chieftain. The chieftain, called Lapu Lapu, is now a national hero for his resistance to the Spanish colonizers. When Magellan arrived in the Philippines, he landed where Cebu City is now. He made friends with the local tribes, and their chiefs were baptized into the Christian faith. After Magellan's death, his ship sailed away to circumnavigate the globe. 44 years later, the Spanish returned, and this time stayed to govern the Philippines for 350 years. They set their mark upon the people and customs of the country, including Eskrima. Certainly, European sword fighting techniques have been added to the fighting system that existed when the Spanish arrived. Before they arrived, the techniques were probably influenced by Chinese and Indian fighting arts. Modern Eskrima developed out of this mixture. The same system is called Arnis in other parts of the Philippines. When Magellan baptized the chieftains, they told him about another chief called Lapu Lapu, who lived on an island nearby. Unfortunately for Magellan, he was a tough fighter. The Spanish set up this monument to Magellan, near to where he died. Surprisingly, Magellan made the mistake of sailing around to attack Lapu Lapu without thinking about the state of the tide. The water around Lapu Lapu's village was shallow, and a battle between the Spaniards and the Filipinos took place in that. The Spaniards wore heavy clothing and armor. Their opponents wore very little. Lapu Lapu, of course, has a monument put up by the Filipinos. Here, on the 27th of April, 1521, Lapu Lapu and his men repulsed the Spanish invaders, killing their leader, Ferdinand Magellan. Thus, Lapu Lapu became the first Filipino to have repelled European aggression. The Spanish stories of the battle say that Lapu Lapu and his men fought with wooden sticks the first reference to a screamer. However, patriotic artists always give Lapu Lapu a sword. Before his death, Magellan gave the friendly chieftains a carved image of the baby Jesus. When the Spaniards returned 44 years later, they found that miraculously it had been kept and so Santo Nino, the sacred child, became the patron saint of the Philippines. Today's procession is in his honor. People travel great distances to be at his church on his day. Outside it are ladies selling candles and dancing the special steps that are also a prayer to the saint. <laughs> Nearly everyone buys candles and sets them to burn in special trays. The melted wax is collected and recycled. Inside the church, the people queue to worship the original statue left by Magellan. They believe his virtue is transmitted through his protective glass. 
As they kiss the glass, the people pray to the sacred child for special favors. Many of the worshippers who travel to be here slept in the streets around the church. After the procession in January, Dossé Paris started to practice for their anniversary celebration. Every night there were training sessions. Special tracksuits and t-shirts were designed and invitations sent to Filipino communities throughout the world. Eskrima is not exclusively a male activity, though not many women practice it. Kakoi's daughter, Kathy, has studied other martial arts and has a black belt in karate. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Very nice. <laughs> It is not easy for a woman to be a student of fighting in the Philippines, since masculine pride is so easily offended. Kathy stopped practicing karate when she discovered that it frightened away boyfriends. <laughs> Dossi Paris also sent invitations to senior members of government and expected at least one general to attend their celebrations. The club planned to display as wide a range of techniques as possible. They particularly wanted to make clear the difference between the classical style and the modern style developed by Kakoi. His main teacher had been his brother, Mumoy Kenyeti, a very hard master to learn on. Mumoy is a traditionalist. He still uses the long-range style that was the most common fighting style. There has been family tension between him and Kakoi because of the way that Kakoi has changed their screamer, especially the added techniques from judo and other Japanese fighting arts. He's locked now. The stone very far. Mumoi is practicing his demonstration of an advanced technique. This combination of stick and dagger is formidable. The grips and locks can be used to hold an opponent, or the dagger can be used to kill him. He's locked there. Now he's locked. Now, the... <coughs> that's luck. Oh, that's... The traditional style of Eskrima has been exported to any country that accepted Filipino immigrants, especially the United States. Many people practice it there, usually under its other names, Arnis or Kali. The Cagnetti family have been to the USA demonstrating their skills, and they always call on Dan Inosanto in Los Angeles. You strike this way? Dan Inosanto is an American-born Filipino. He is very well known in the martial arts world because of the time that he spent working with Bruce Lee. That's something else. I like to learn it. I hope I can uh, learn it in the Philippines. What's your name in yours? Your, uh, well, I never really got in deep into the spot of dog. I really would just like, like my father. Actually, uh, one of this, uh, uh, you know, this uh, style, but... Uh, this is the, the window, that, uh, the, uh, the classical is, form. Yeah, the classical form. This is uh, what my uh, uncle Momoy uh, teaches. When was this form developed? Somebody said it as far back as 1930. Was yeah. it 1930 when they Before developed this form? 1930s, yeah. Dan teaches Chinese boxing and the Filipino systems. His training techniques are very organized and yet relaxed. Eskrima has yet to gain an international reputation. Dan is in a unique position. As a master of both Chinese and Filipino systems, he is able to compare the two and to assess Eskrima. Okay, time. With weaponry, 
it is very hard to be. I'm talking about dagger and stick. Uh, I've always maintained that the Chinese are the prettiest and that the Filipinos seem to be the most practical as of right now. But I'm not saying that a Chinese martial artist wouldn't be as effective as a Philippine martial artist. I'm trying to say that the way it is taught, it is functional. So I want you to strike the diagonal, diagonal, diagonal up, diagonal up, horizontal, horizontal. Then your overhead, which is this way, your backhand overhead, which is this way, up, cut, this way, see? So this one, you practice your blows. I want you to just slowly, if, I'm gonna, if you go like that. Okay. This is your kick, we kick and out. Okay? Okay, let's give it a try. Though it is light, the stick used in a scream is a powerful weapon. It can be used to strike quickly at many points on the body. When a blow lands, it is painful, perhaps paralyzing rather than bone breaking. It makes its effect by the number of places that can be hurt in a few seconds. It is the quickest art to be the most dangerous just because of the weaponry. Uh, its destruction of kicks makes all kicking arts kind of obsolete. Uh, its destruction of the limbs very quickly uh, it makes a lot of the punching arts obsolete. Okay, now, what I want you to do is you feed one and you follow, you deflect and follow with three follow-ups. And you feed one and you follow with three, okay, slow motion, okay? Deflect, three hits. You three, three hits. Its techniques are basically the same, whether the fighting is with fists, daggers, or larger weapons. So you go three, you attack with three, and he blocks with three. Okay, that's the position, okay? All right, time. To me, it's one of the most well-rounded martial arts that I've ever, ever seen. And that's not taking anything away from the Chinese because they're, they're very good, excellent. But I've always maintained that uh, everybody has something to offer. takes down, see, this is it, see, so that's the drill, see, because I want to get the punyu in here, almost like the flow, right, which is using the butt, now in reality this is not going to last very long, see, we just catch it here like that, see, for the training, see, as I said before, this is not going to last very long, but it's just to get the flow. Okay. Okay, you can do it. Okay, let's try. So you take it down. Okay. Okay, ready. Flow very slowly. Thrust, butt, strike. Thrust, butt, catch, strike, take down. The techniques taught by Dan are mainly the classical ones, but he hopes to go to Cebu City to study with Kakoi. There are two of his techniques that Dan doesn't use yet. The curved strike and the complex disarming tricks. Now, there are two types of disarming. Disarming in which you seize, when you seize, disarm him, and secondly, is when you knock take off his hand. In actual sparring, see, you can disarm him that way. Hmm? For actual sparring, then you hold him, then disarm. These disarming techniques are probably Kakoi's greatest pleasure. 
He is constantly thinking of new ways of taking weapons away from opponents. His hands seem to have minds of their own. All the disarming techniques are based on applying leverage in various ways to his opponent's stick. Kakoe calls the style that he teaches Escrido, the way of Escrima. He is deliberately copying Japanese customs in this. There is no doubt that he has made Escrima more effective. Serious, no smiles. back to your respective places and do the Amara. Malandrakas. Face the front. Okay, face your partner and do the pinky pinky. In order to hold sporting competitions, they have devised a system of body protection. Wearing this armor made it possible to hold a national contest in 1976. This was the first such competition. Dusse Paris swept the field, and Kakoi naturally was the champion master. Hello. Okay. The judges estimate the effect of the blows to decide who scores points. Even wearing armor, they still hold back from hitting hard. Ready. the 50th anniversary, people started to arrive from many parts of the Philippines. There were fewer than they had hoped for, because a typhoon disrupted travel. Some people got to Cebu after wading through rivers. Others arrived more comfortably. 
The airport reception party waited some hours for the important guests of honour to arrive. The Philippines were, until recently, under martial law. President Marcus has re-established civilian government. It is, however, a country under severe political strain. The generals are still powerful in government. It is a measure of the importance attached to Escrima that General Estrada made a special journey to attend the event. He flew in a government plane with many other guests. There are many reasons for promoting Escrima. It has its national hero, Lapu Lapu. It is fast becoming the national sport. It is an effective fighting system, especially suitable for crowd control and other police work. Kakoi regularly trains groups of soldiers. General Estrada is often referred to as the third most important man in the country, after the president and General Ver. They invited General Ver, but he could not come. Amongst his other duties, General Estrada is head of internal security. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Brigadier General Wilfredo C. Estrada, Narapel Vice President and Special Guest in tonight's celebration of the 50th anniversary of the founding of Doxy Paris. Distinguished guests, General Wilfredo C. Strada and the Lone Eagle from San Jose, California, United States, Fred Badalan, Master of Kimbo. <laughs> and Mr. Bing Vinculado, the assistant of Robin Mascardo. Fellow Escrimadores, friends, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all. I thank you. It was an occasion for speeches and emotion, especially when the five surviving Cagnetti brothers stood on parade. The brothers inherit their fighting ability from their grandfather, who fought as a guerrilla against the Spanish in 1890. Then the Philippines became an American colony, until the Japanese invaded. The brothers became involved in the highly successful resistance movement that tied up so many Japanese troops. Finally, the Philippines became independent, and the Cañetes, with their devotion to a wholly Filipino fighting form, became part of the search for a national identity. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, as a sports enthusiast myself, I find gratifying our increasing appreciation of the importance of our niece, which was very much part of the way of life of our forebears. To them, it was more than just a sport, recreation or art. It was a vital skill. Magellan was killed in Mactan Island because Lapu Lapu was very, very good in Arnis. That's really credit to the Cebuanos. May I reiterate my sincere congratulations to all of you. Carry on the good work. Thank you and good day. Thank you. The rest of the evening was devoted to demonstrations by people from all parts of the Philippines. The swordsmen start performing in slow motion, then steadily speed up. Even though they're using real swords, not sticks, they still use their left hands to try to control or parry their opponent's sword hand. Good 
car is against three opponents. One is down. Two tumble. Another one tumbling again. Kakoi Kenyeti commentated with a father's pride on his son Edgar's carefully staged fight against overwhelming odds. Finally, Kukoi himself demonstrated his techniques. The history of the fighting arts is full of men like him. They invented new techniques improving their particular fighting art. They themselves are forgotten, but what they taught will be remembered by the generations which follow and added to the store of knowledge that makes up the fighting arts.